Hey everybody, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, depending on where you might be joining us from in the world today. My name is Meg Alexander, and I am, as always, honored and excited to get to host another Power to Fly Chat and Learn virtual event. Now today we're going to be talking about mastering self-promotion in the workplace, and this is going to be uh, a discussion with uh, members of the engineering team from Yelp. Now, I'm really excited to dive in here, but before we do, I just want to say a quick hello and welcome to anyone who might just now be joining us. Um, thank you so, so much for coming out today and joining us for today's event with Yelp. Now, there, here's a little uh, kind of housekeeping. This will be especially helpful if today is your first event with Power to Fly. And if that's the case, then hi, welcome. We're so happy to meet you. Now, the love is no less real for my frequent flyers, y'all. I love seeing your familiar names and faces and avatars in the chat. So thank you all so, so much for joining us today. Now, um, whether this is your first event or your 50th, we want to encourage you to participate. And you can do that in a couple different ways. Um, if you'd like, you're always welcome to turn your cameras on, share your smiling, maskless faces with us safely. Um, but y'all, there is no need to be Instagram perfect, okay? Just because I got all fancy and put dry shampoo in my hair today does not mean that you cannot bring your messy buns, your bathrobes, your toddler sidekicks, whatever you got going on, we want to see it. Now, if you don't wanna be on camera, that's completely fine. You don't have to be. Um, you are always able to participate in other ways as well. If you want, um, we have a Q&A function that is open for today's event. Um, so if you have a question that you would like asked to our, our speakers today, um, go ahead, head on over to the Q&A function. You can find it either in Q&A uh, on your main toolbar or you can find it under more. Um, it'll be a drop down feature there. Please feel free to ask us questions. Let us know what you want to know, um, so that way we can make sure that you know we're we're making the most of your engagement in today's event. Now um, we are recording today's event. Now what that means for all of you is you don't have to take notes. You get to sit back, relax, and enjoy the conversations that I'm about to have with some amazing Yelpers. Now. The last thing that I wanna highlight um, is our YouTube channel. So we are live streaming to YouTube right now. Hi, YouTube. Um, and this video is gonna be posted within about, see, go, the video is posted to YouTube usually by end of day today. Um, and then within four to five business days, everybody that registered for today's event, whether you were able to join us or not, everybody's gonna get an email from Power to Fly that will have a link to where you can rewatch this recording when it goes live on our website. Now. Obviously, uh, you know, there's going to be some amazing uh, nuggets dropped in today's event, but um, the big thing that I want y'all to know is if something gets said today and it is just oh. paradigm shifting, mind blowing, absolutely amazing info, and you don't want to wait four to five business days until a video goes live to share it with a friend or a coworker or a relative, you don't have to. You can head over to our YouTube channel. Um, like I said, by the end of today, it's usually going to be posted. Um, there's also a, a big section of our kind of greatest hits. Some of our most um, most fun and most informational chats are stored there. But truly, all the mother load of information and intel is on our website. When it comes to the Power to Fly website, there is so, so many resources there, y'all, all for free, all for you. And those resources, getting them into the hands of people like you is how we think we're going to move the needle when it comes to things like gender equity in the workplace, pay equity. You know, we want to see all those things. And if you're here, you probably do too. So please make sure that you check out our YouTube channel. We'll be sharing links for all of this in the chat thread as we go. Um, but we are happy, happy, happy to have you join us today and hopefully check out some of our past events uh, later on. Now, the last thing I want to highlight today is our code of conduct. Now, um, this will be less of an issue since, you know, we don't have the chat function uh, up and working today, but I do just want to remind everyone um, that uh, as we are interacting with our, our fellow attendees or, or connecting with our speakers, just make sure that as always, we are leading from a place of kindness and respect, okay? The, what it boils down to is don't be a jerk. If you got questions on it, just DM me. I'm happy to help you out. Now, very, very excited to tell y'all a little bit more about Yelp today. Now, I don't think there's many people that don't have name brand recognition with Yelp. Um, I think it's pretty pretty well, well established what y'all do. Um, but truly, y'all, there's some great information on this page. Now, this is what their company page looks like on powertofly.com. Um, from here, you can go into overviews. Um, about will give you more information about the companies. Um, sometimes information about benefits and things is listed in there. The other thing that's great on this tab is this jobs tab, obviously obviously, or sorry, that's great on this page is the jobs tab. Um, from there, you can uh, search and apply to roles right from powertofly.com. Now, there's a couple different things and different tools and things in this in this page that you can utilize in your job search. We'll share a little bit more about those um, towards the end of today's event. 
But the one thing I really want to highlight here is if you are interested in Yelp, even if you don't see a role right this second that, that sparks your interest, make sure you push this little pink button that says follow. Go ahead and tap on that. It's going to add you to Yelp's follow network. Now, what that does is it works like your friend who already works at Yelp. It's going to allow Power to Fly to tell the Yelp team that you're interested in working with them even before you fill out a job application. And like I said, it's a really great way to make sure that you stay on their radar, but it's also going to allow Power to Fly to keep Yelp on your radar because we'll tell you when they post new roles. So um, again, I'll go into a little more detail about how you can utilize this page for your job search, for your first interview, all that kind of stuff. So stick around and we'll give you some more info on that a little bit later. Now, First up, I'm very happy to bring Amy Forrest to the team today. Amy is a software engineer with Yelp. Um, Amy, would you like to tell our audience members a little bit more about you today? Yeah, so I actually joined Yelp uh, 35 months ago. Uh, so that's like almost three years at this point. Uh, kind of crazy how time flies. Anyhow, I'm located in Montreal, which is, you know, Eastern Canada and Quebec. Um, so therefore, I speak French. Uh, very fortunate to be bilingual. Anyhow, a uh, quick fun fact about me. I have a 16 square foot tent in my house um, because I'm basically a plant parent. Uh, and, you know, I can't get away from gardening. Um, so I basically have to do it in the winter. And so that's the only way for me to do that. Um, anyhow, that's me. I love it. Um, what kind of uh, plants are you parenting the most of? Do you do like succulents? Peppers. Or you... Definitely yeah. peppers, hot peppers, habaneros, jalapenos. I have some purple jalapenos this year. Very cool. Um, I love that. Yeah. Very cool. Thanks for sharing. All right. Okay. Joining Amy on stage, we have Oriana Baldizan. Oriana, what would you like our audience members to know about you today? Well, hello everyone. Uh, I come from Venezuela, but I am based in Munich and I joined Yelp um, almost three years ago. So three years in October. And a fun fact that is related to Amy's fun fact is that I kill plants, unfortunately. <laughs> uh, I've killed cactus, I killed many things, uh, but so far I have two plants with me uh, that have survived more than a year. So I think I'm making progress. But I'll have to check like with it. Amy. <laughs> I believe in you. Um, I went from killing literally anything that I, I could look at a plant and two days later it would be dead. Um, and then I started watering with ice cubes actually. And that changed the game entirely because it makes it a lot harder to overwater your plants because you can see all the water right there. You're like, no, 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 that's too much. You can pull it back. So in case that works for anybody else, that and water is not love to plants. <laughs> that is what I had to be told. Uh, so yeah, I pretend they don't exist, that I kind of ignore them most of the time. And generally they're pretty happy. So I hope that works for you too. All right, joining Ariana and Amy on stage, we are going to add to the trio Surya Pillai. Surya is an engineering manager. Um, Surya, what else would you like our audience members to know about you today? Um, hey everyone. So I'm located in San Francisco Bay Area. I've been at Yelp for about six and a half years now. Um, but I still remember my first day like it was yesterday. So it's been a fun time for sure. Um, fun fact about me, I am a budding abstract artist. So I love to do big canvases. So we are running out of space on the walls at my place um, and I'm very partial to the color green so most of my paintings are inspired by the hikes that we go on um, yeah my husband I think is pretty much uh, done with the color green by now so <laughs> well that's amazing and it's so so wonderful to live with uh, you know somebody with artistic or creative abilities that's wonderful um, I remember when I was in high school, I had a friend who was obsessed with murals. She just wanted all, that's all she wanted to do. And they literally ran out of walls in her house and around the neighborhood and whatever. And so she started painting on drop cloths, actually. She'd get like really like cheap discount, whatever garbage paint, pour it all over to make the base. Cause it like, you know, the drop cloths are made to suck that kind of stuff up. And then she would paint murals on them. And so she would, um, she, she, I think I bought one from her for like 60 or $80 to take with me to college one year because you can't hang stuff on the walls in dorm rooms unless it's sticky tack. Um, and so like we, I took that thing with me for th across three states, I think. Um, so if you're ever deciding you want to do something that's large, but a little bit more portable, drop cloths. They're super cheap as far as canvas goes. <laughs> 
All right, y'all. I have think I've pulled enough of the uh, the focus from today's event for a little while. So let's stop our share here, and I'll get all of our panelists brought up on stage. Now, as we go through, um, I'm going to be asking questions to each panelist. These are uh, based largely on the questions that you all asked at registration. So what that means is, if you are here live and you're not sure if we're going to be able to get to your topic or your question today please, please make sure you send it into that Q&A chat, okay? I've got the list of questions in front of me, so if we see them, that'll be awesome. The other thing I wanna highlight is if we are going over one of your questions and maybe there's some details or you know extra context that we should know, please, please, please feel free to send that in. Um, like I said, you can use that Q&A function within Zoom. Uh, if you are unsure how to use that, uh, drop a line to Rob. He's sitting back seat for me, thanks Rob. Um, and we will be happy to uh, prioritize questions from people who, you know, y'all came out to be here with us live. We want to make sure we that we reward that. So, all right. Um, okay, so we're going to talk about navigating promotions and career advancement. Um, this person had asked, what does self-promotion mean to you? And why do you think that it's an important, ta or important tactic for career advancement? Surya, I want to start with you first. What do you think, when you hear the word self-promotion, what does that mean to you? Thanks for the question. Um, so self-promotion essentially in a remote work environment means actively and strategically showcasing your work and achievements to ensure that they are visible to others and understood by others. Um, now, I say actively because it's about taking ownership of your growth. It needs to be strategic because self-promotion, when not done right, can be a double-edged sword and you don't want to go down that road. So it's best to identify your motivation uh, for self-promotion. Identify why do you want to do this? Like what is what is your goal? What do you want to achieve with this? So putting, if for example, my goals are to put my work in front of others, not leaving it up to chance that uh, others will see it, others will understand it. Remember, you are your best advocate. You know your work best. You know the value of your work best. So do not leave it to chance for others to understand and see and experience that. Yeah. I like that. I think you're right. Um, you know, we are our own loudest cheerleaders. Um, and so I think you're right. It does. It helps to know for sure why you're doing this. Like, are you trying to, are you trying to kind of toot your own horn because people are not noticing and you want more opportunities? Are you trying to toot your own horn because maybe somebody else is getting celebrated this week? Like, you know, and don't get me wrong. It's one of the things I tell my friends, I tell everybody I know. Wanting attention and wanting that 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 focus is not a bad thing. You just got to figure out why you want it and then how you're going about getting it. All right, Amy, I want to go to you next. How do you feel about self-promotion? When you hear the word self-promotion, do you think the same as Surya or do you hear it differently? Oh, definitely. I think you definitely need to have somewhat of a growth plan. Uh, it could be on a short time horizon. Think of like one, three years, maybe longer term, five, 10 years. Uh, but when I think of self-promotion, I really think about making myself visible. Um, so I work in a support role. So I basically help other people kind of fulfill their own work. And I work on a lot of tooling uh, for um, for the benefit of others. And so it's really paramount that I broadcast, you know, anything that I release because I need to have adoption. And so if I don't really go out in front of people and kind of toot my own horn, it's not going to really have that much adoption, uh, which is very core to my career progression. But not only that, I think self-promotion is a really great way of, you know, uh, based on that plan that you set yourself, um, maybe promote things that you're really more interested in. So let's say you're in a data science position, you want to go more towards engineering. Well, try and broadcast those engineering accomplishments more because it'll drive your path to where you want to be into the future. Anyhow, that's what self-promotion means to me. Excellent. Okay. Oriana, let's come around to you here. When you hear self-promotion, what does it mean to you and how do you go about doing it? Well, I mean, it's the same uh, as Sergio and Amy said, but at the beginning of my career, it was not the case. So I am a very shy person. So I really struggle to speak up and put myself out there. And uh, for a long time, I thought that people that did that, you know, were not authentic and they were like putting like a sales cap uh, in front of them. And I was like, no, I, my, my work should speak uh, for me. That That's good enough. Right. But only like what three people would see it. Uh, unless I actually uh, put myself out there. So what I want to highlight is that 
even if you're shy or if you think uh, the way I was thinking before, you can change that that way. You can be authentic by self-promoting yourself. And it is important to understand that this is the way to advance your career and no one else will do it for you. At least once, y'all, at least once in an event, I lose my mute button. Um, no, I think you make a really good point, which is like, if if you're doing all of this work, you want other people to see it, right? And other people are constantly going to be not necessarily looking at you, but like people are going to be observing. So pick the thing you want them to observe. You know what I mean? Like try and direct the eye a bit. Um, and I think, you know, Oriana, you bring up a really good point. Is somebody who is shy, I think it'll surprise no one that I'm not real shy, but I also don't really like to self-promote because I'm a lot better and I feel a lot more comfortable being like, hey, look at this cool thing this person's doing. Oh my gosh, everybody pay attention to the cool person. So it can feel a little bit disingenuous or feel a little bit false if I'm trying to do this for myself. For you, as someone who des describes themselves as more introverted, what challenges does that put in, in your path when you're trying to self-promote? Is it just you're trying to get past the the bit of like talking about yourself or are there other um, kind of challenges that you faced when it comes to self-promotion? Well, for me, it is a challenge to talk about myself because I'm like, please don't put me in the center of anything. Uh, but it's also just talking in front of people. That makes me super anxious, super anxious. And it's something that gets better as you practice it more. Uh, so yeah, that's, that's basically. Okay. Well, I think that's a good point. Um, let's see here. All right. Um, all right. If we are trying to overcome these challenges to, to self-promotion, um, you know, one of the things that is, is kind of going to kind of differentiate is whether you are an individual contributor or if you are um, in any sort of like management space, right? Soria, how does this impact how you can or how you should be self-promoting? Yeah, um, like I said, very different based on the kind of role you are in and what challenges you face are based on those roles. So if you're an engineer, if you're an individual contributor, your work is more concrete. It's the deliverables are more clear. Um, so when I was an engineer, the challenges that I faced, this is more internal. Um, I always had a question of, okay, is the work that I'm doing enough? Is the work that I'm doing at the same level as what is expected from others at the same level in my team, in my group, in my org, at Yelp? Um, rather than kind of stewing in those questions yourself, um, I think it's important to discuss that with your immediate manager. It's important to discuss that maybe with a mentor. Um, so understanding what levels mean for your company, for your group, asking for concrete examples of what it means to perform at your level on this team. Uh, what has others before you done? What is the current team doing? Um, obviously you don't need to ask for exact name and their achievements, what you're asking is examples. So, you know, you can definitely um, leverage your manager's dedication to your career growth for that. Um, as a management, as a manager, if you are in people management or any other management role, you know that your work is more abstract. It's not very well defined. It's not concrete. Your deliverables are very indirect. Your success depends on the success of the team that you're managing, on the people you're managing. Uh, so the challenges that you face there is mostly around how, what does success look like in that role? What does it mean for your team to be successful? Does that How does that translate into your career growth? Um, again, the solution that I've found the more you, most useful to me is to identify mentors that I can identify with, uh, that I know maybe came from the same background, that I know might have faced similar challenges, talking to them and talking and understanding their experiences and how they have navigated it. That's obviously one side. Second is whenever you step into a new role or you take up new responsibilities, um, clearly defining your set of responsibilities up front to start with would help a lot. So when you're onboarding, it's good to have a clarity with the list of responsibilities that you are accountable for. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's good. I like that. 
Um, all right. Before we leave this area, um, Oriana, did you get to say all of your uh, your stuff around like regular reporting meetings, that kind of stuff? And we touched on it briefly. Um, uh, we touched like, it the briefly. Uh, yeah. But uh, now what I wanted also to add is uh, when you do your regular reporting is you try to be concise and to be mindful of the audience. We engineers tend to give a lot of details without giving context or just say, oh, there, there is an error here. Uh, many users have an error in the app. And your manager will be like, but how many users? Like, <laughs> which app? What is specific is the error? So that also helps, I think, in general, when you're reporting, when you're giving a presentation. So something I would like to, to highlight. No, I think that's a really good point. I like that a lot. Um, OK. Um... <laughs> the, there can be sometimes it feels like there's a balance right between kind of being self-promoting as well as using kind of seeking out feedback or other methods to keep growing and keep learning um do you think that there is a way to balance this and if so what do you think that looks like um Surya how about let's start with you yeah um like I said self-promotion can be a double-edged sword so Self-promotion so does not, or rather should not, be a one-way communication cha channel. Uh, so you're not just broadcasting. You're not a broadcast channel for your career growth. No, that's not what I mean. Uh, it should essentially be a cyclic process where your goal for self-promotion is, con if it is continuous improvement and career growth, then from continuous improve continuously improving, you can know if you're successful only if you ask for feedback, only if you ask for reviews. Um, so continuous improvement to receiving feedback, to presenting that, okay, you took this feedback, here's how you translated into concrete work, or here's how you accommodated that feedback into your growth and then did your work. So that's self-promotion. And then how do you know if that's successful uh, is to integrate what you showcased back into growing more in that area and then receiving feedback. So that's the cyclic process that I feel uh, should be maintained rather than it just being, oh, you're just doing work and like talking about it. That's it. Like there's no two-way communication then. Yeah, absolutely. All right, Amy, I want to hear from you. Do you think that there is a way to balance the self-promotion and seeking improvement? And if so, what do you think that looks like? How have you seen it look? <clears throat> I think there's two ways. Um, let's say we're talking about externally, at least outside of your immediate team. When you're broadcasting things, uh, it's always helpful to ask for feedback. Uh, personally, I'm a very self-critical person. So let's say I release some tooling that I think would be helpful to my stakeholders, maybe trying to poke holes in it and inviting people to confirm if those holes do exist uh, is a good way to receive feedback. But also with my manager, I think the best way is showcasing what you've done, uh, but also setting clear expectations about what you're expected to do. I think this goes back a bit to the previous question, um, but really kind of motivating your work. Um, requesting feedback and being open to that feedback is how I try and balance it personally. I like that. I think that's a really good way to look at it. I mean, and also the thing to remember y'all is like, well, I mean, I feel like this used to be a very familiar like uh, quote from Yogi Berra, who's a famous baseball coach, but nobody's old enough to remember him. So in the immortal words of trick daddy, it's not tricking if you got it right. It's not, it's not bragging if it's something you did. It's that's it's a fact. It's something that's that needs to be known, basically. So I very much appreciate that we can kind of look at this less from a place of like, this isn't bragging. This is here is here are facts about things that are true. I am really good at fill in the blank. Like that is what we're going for here. Um, OK, let's talk about the importance of networking and mentorship. Now, obviously, these are huge, huge aspects of like career building and ways that we can kind of plan for and grow our careers. But do you think that these that these two options, how do you think these should be leveraged? Basically, how should people be utilizing their network or their mentors to help move their careers forward? Um, Soria, let's start with you. Awesome. Um, so. Growing up, I'm pretty sure everybody kind of heard this statement uh, that knowledge is power. It's a cliche for a reason. It comes up very often everywhere um, because 
whatever it is that you do, doesn't matter what field you're in, doesn't matter what role you're in, um, that continuous improvement aspect that we talked about happens when you gain knowledge, when you improve your skills. So for me, gaining knowledge falls into different buckets. There's the implicit and expl explicit knowledge, which is the skills that you have. The implicit knowledge is the skills that you already inherently have as a person. So, you know, um, these are not learned skills necessarily. Um, but explicit skills are the skills that you learn, that you acquire through your schooling, through your career. Um, to learn and acquire knowledge, which is explicit, um, you kind of read up on things, you kind of go to school. But what happens once you start your career, right? Um, do you always get time to kind of invest in learning new things? Probably not. And that's where your community, that's where your mentor, that's where your network comes to play. Um, if, if you are interested in, let's say, um, abstract art and you want to learn more about it, um, how does that advance your career? You say maybe that speeds, uh, frees up your mind and it makes you more creative, you know, and thereby kind of giving you a leverage to giving you some leverage to kind of use that creativity in your job. You do that with different mentors. So that's the role that mentors have played in my career, where I kind of identify area to grow in and go speak to mentors who are specialized or who have done well in that area. Somebody who has that skill already, has that knowledge already. Um, in terms of building intangible knowledge, knowledge that comes through practice or through uh, your environment, that happens when you just talk to people, for example, during your lunch breaks, you talk to somebody and then somebody mentions a bug that they were working on and you learn more about how they handle that bug. And maybe you, that's something that you can use. Maybe you didn't realize that you learned it, but when you have to kind of face an incident or an issue at work, there is that subconscious memory that you have that, oh, somebody did something and maybe I should try the same, you know? So you build that knowledge base uh, slowly and progressively. Similarly, attending conferences in your area uh, of expertise or in your field of work, um, attending local meetups, and even if it is, even if you are not presenting, if you even if you're just passively attending, a lot gets registered in your brain, you know, um, and sometimes a new idea pops up, but that idea's inception happened in a networking event, in a conference, or in a meetup. So, um, those are the places that I've seen where I have been able to kind of acquire more knowledge and be successful in growing my career. Okay. I like that. Um, Amy, as we're talking about networking, I know that you there's two distinct types. Can you drill down on those and tell us a little bit about which we can use for different things? Yeah. So first off, you always have an internal network at the current company you're working at. Um, I think something that's extremely useful is just dropping into people's office hours. So at Yelp, we have office hours that, you know, we might have leadership office hours. We might have some that are for particular teams. And so let's say you're venturing into something that's a bit novel to you, like a new domain that you're not too sure. It's really helpful to hop into that, um, those network, those office hours, because not only do you meet new people and kind of establish connections that you can then leverage like further on. Um, you do gain some knowledge there. So that's the probably the first time, uh, first type of networking that I would say. Um, also, it helps you motivate your work. Like again, I'm in a support role. So it's really helpful for me to go with like end users and kind of asking them about their experiences because it helps me better contextualize my work. I think that goes back to what Soraya said with, oh, as an IC, is the work that I'm doing really enough? Is Am I putting my efforts where they really should lie? Um, so for me, it helps kind of contextualize my work and the mission of my teams. Uh, so that's like internal networking, but then you also have something like external networking. Uh, personally, this is probably a weaker part for me, but um, the way that I built my external network is just by having really great relationships with current coworkers and carrying those forward after they've left the company. So uh, what I would say is, if you have a, again, a one, three, five, whatever your plan, network with people that have the skills that you believe that you need to have within your plan. And then maybe they can become mentors. And if they don't, 
that's fine. You could still just get tidbits of uh, of knowledge from them to help you drive your career forward. Um, it also is a good way to contextualize how your current organization is, how other organizations uh, work. Maybe you have more of a flatter uh, management structure in different teams, and that kind of helps you uh, navigate uh, your internal company politics better. Um, so those are the two types of networkings in my view of them. Very cool. All right. Um, now, we do have some questions coming in from the chat, so I want to make sure we touch on those before we keep moving here. Um, Brigitte had asked if you could give an example of a time when you self-promoted effectively. I'm struggling to see how I actually can embody this in my workplace. So I really like this. Does anybody want to share an example of a time when they self-promoted and what you know what they did, where they, they did this promotion um, and what that looked like? Sorry, I see you nodding. I hate to call on you in the first always, but... <laughs> Yeah, no worries. Um, so at Yelp, I started as an engineer. Um, I was always interested in being an individual contributor and did that for about three, three and a half years. It so happened that the manager of my team and uh, team left at the end of three and a half years for, for another opportunity. Um, that's fine. At the time, I was always on the path for tech leadership. Like I didn't think to even consider management role. Uh, but when they left, I saw that, okay, I stepped in and did a bit of managerial tasks while there was no manager on the team. So that was an interesting revolution to me that, okay, I can do this. And I've, I've kind of successfully done that for maybe a month or two. Um, is that that's something that I want to try doing now? Because I was on a tech leadership path, management role was not something that was considered for me. My leadership did not know about this. Um, but I did have a one-on-one -on -one with my skip level at the time and said, here is what I tried in the last two months while we didn't have a direct EM on the team. Um, what do you think? Like, are my skills suitable? Do you feel like this kind of checks the boxes for what you're looking for? What is it that you're looking for? Um, and they were able to explain explain to me what they are looking for, and I kind of was able to answer with, okay, here are the things that I did. Maybe you know, I can try this, and that's kind of how I transitioned to management. Yeah. I like that. Okay, um, Amy or Oriana, does anybody want to share an example of their own? Amy, you want to go? Yeah, I can drop in. Um, so I recently went through a career transition. I first joined Yelp as a data scientist, and um, data scientists are people very much focused on, you know, product metrics, um, stories and whatnot. Uh, but when I joined the team, I realized we kind of had a problem. A lot of the kind of more uh, mature people at the team had left for different opportunities. And we were left with this like legacy code base that no one really wanted to maintain because that's not really that fun. Um, so I basically carved out my niche within my team. Um, really kind of broadcasted what I've done to kind of help do that and take that off everyone else's plate. And naturally that just led to me having more opportunities, um, maybe flagging migrations that we need to do into the future, different type of work that we need to do um, just to kind of simplify our lives out into the future. And so that kind of let me more self-direct my work. Um, and, you know, after a few years of doing this, I eventually was moved into a software engineering position, which I'm very happy with. Um, but that was really done by kind of focusing on that niche that I want to fill uh, and kind of broadcasting to my team how that helps them. All right. That's the other aspect of the self-promotion thing I wanted to touch on is when you are doing this promotion, um, where are you doing it and how are you doing it? Like, you know, Amy, you had said talking to your network and letting people know what you were interested in learning. So you were talking to probably your supervisor or other people within the company that had to deal with those areas. Yeah. Uh, Slack channels. Yeah. Kind of okay. Slack channels is like a big one because um, again, like these are things that people usually used, but they weren't too task with maintaining. So I would go into our Slack channel, give people helpful tidbits uh, for people with like absolutely no context on what to do, um, try and kind of distribute that knowledge. And just naturally that led to me getting more questions on these more technical asks. And I was able to also build a network through that of having people just interact with me more. Uh, and so I was able to empathize with, you know, where they were coming from, what the work they were doing. Um, and it really just helped me kind of frame myself as more of a point person in that sense. 
Yeah. No, I mean, I think that makes a ton of sense. And, you know, we talk about this a lot when it comes to like personal branding, um, which sounds really fancy, but basically all it is, is you're, you're deciding or trying to direct how you want people to talk about you when you're not in the room. That's literally what you're doing. Um, and I think that that is also a really, I think that's an important thing to remember is what's actually happening in this interaction um, when you're doing something like networking, right? Because there's a lot of times people see it as transactional or kind of like a one-way street, which is you know not really accurate. Um, and we did get a question from Ashley that I want to address here. Ashley wanted to know, what advice would you give to someone who absolutely hates networking because they feel like it's a waste of time? How can it be made fun for someone who loves the work and not the politics? I love this question because waste of time is very specific, especially for something like networking that can fill a lot, like can do a lot for you in different areas. Um, so if you're talking to a friend and they, they won't come to this event with you because they're just like, eh, it's a waste of time. What would you tell your friend to get them to come to that event? Soraya, you're nodding. No, Amy, Amy, you're first. You're first off mute. Let's go get some food. Make it an <laughs> outing, yeah. right? You have to kind of motivate them in the fact that, okay, let's say you're trying to bring a friend along. Just make it more of an outing. Um, you don't have to spend like the whole day at this conference. You can only go for like an hour or two. You could go one of the three days, for example. So um, sometimes it can feel like a waste of time. Uh, some things that might be difficult is just like a bunch of inbound uh, direct messages on LinkedIn. That's kind of annoying um, because sometimes you don't get responses. Um, but, you know, sometimes you can find really great mentors that way. But people, I don't know about you, but personally, I love social interaction. Um, hopefully you do too. And so I would say conferences are a really great way of getting to meet people and making more of an outing rather than just something I have to invest work into. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Use the buddy system, make it fun for yourself. Um, Soria, how do you, how do you approach this? Um, do you, were you ever in this point where you were like, networking's pointless? What am I doing here? Um, I'm more of a person who likes to kind of understand what's going on. So networking felt reasonable enough that it gives me an insight into what other people are thinking. I'm always, I always do have this um, question in my mind about, am I doing enough? What are other people doing? Like what's going on in other people's minds? Networking gave me an insight into that uh, or helped answer that. But uh if, if you feel like this is a waste of time, um, identifying a few goals as to what Amy said, right? Like go for an hour, go for half an hour. You don't have to dedicate an entire day. Uh, start small, see if there's value. You can always retrospect and then not do it if you don't find value in it. So I would recommend starting small. Start with a local meetup, start with a a uh, group hangout at your company, like start small, start with what's organic to you, you know, uh, maybe it's just a meeting with people who are interested in the project that you're working on, you just want to share that and you want to do a deep dive on that project. That's the first thing that you can do and see if that kind of socializing helps within the company. Yeah. Then go Excel, like, you don't have to go to the biggest conference for three days uh, outside of your town and like feel like it's a waste of time and and, and energy first you know yeah yeah I like that a lot I, I very much appreciate that idea of kind of establish either what you're hoping to get from this or set the parameters of like okay I will talk to five people and then I can go home and then you're like sweet I've done the thing and then if you are from the school of Meg you will give yourself a very small treat because treats are important and everybody needs to be kept going so but I like this I think you know it does it makes a ton of sense and I also want to highlight that like 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 Amy said, having lunch with someone at work is networking. All you're doing is making friends. That's literally all it is. It sounds a lot fancier and they don't want to talk. Like it sounds, it doesn't sound like businessy enough to be like, we're all going to go make friends, but we are. That's literally what it is. All right. So think about it less as I need to connect to this person to elevate my career and more like, I am very curious about something that this person did. I want to learn about that. Because whether it's personal or professional, you're showing interest in that person, which is going to create a connection. So even if you if the even if the connection starts on the personal end of things, it doesn't mean it cannot then expand into the business side. Just because 
you know, you know the Carol Gardens and you also want advice on what to do with your rhododendrons doesn't mean that then later on you can't be like, hey, Carol, that project that you're working on is really interesting. Can you tell me more about that? Like, how did you get that started? How'd you get buy-in for this? And boom, Carol is now your both plant and work bestie. So I'm just saying y'all works in mysterious ways. Um, okay, let's keep going with our questions here. Um, da, 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 in and outside of Yelp. Okay, let's talk about building your professional networks. Obviously, this is something that, you know, like Amy touched on, can be done externally or internally. But how do you build and then maintain these networks? Um, you know, getting out there and making friends is one thing, but then the maintenance of it to keep those connections fresh. What do you recommend to people about this? Um, Amy, do you want to start us? Yeah. So like I said, a lot of my network was just built at past companies, um, just trying to be a pleasant person to work with. And that has led me to make friends again at work uh, and just carrying those forward. So honestly, like any relationship is bi-directional. You have to put in effort. The other person has to put in effort to keep it going. So what I've tried to do is just, you know, set up recurring meetings. Doesn't have to be like every month, every quarter, um, maybe like once a year, you just keep uh, touching base with people that you found value uh, from talking to uh, and just kind of carrying those networks uh, and just having them just grow over time um, through just keeping those relationships going. Surya, how do you feel about this? Do you think that there is maybe a pattern that people should follow to to maintain the, this network or do you think it depends on the relationship? Um, it, it definitely depends on the relationship. Um but that does not mean that you can't follow a pattern either. So what I'm trying to say is, for example, um, let's say you have a connection or you have kind of cons constantly worked with this other team and engineers from this other team, and this team owns systems that consumes from the systems that you build. So this is the boundary team, right? Like you work very closely with them, um, but you don't work with them on a very day-to-day -day basis. Um, for something like that, it's important to know what's happening on that other team because you do want to have some influence on their roadmap. You want their work to maybe influence your roadmap. So there's an incentive in keeping that connection going. Um, for that, something like what Amy said works best, you know, like have some recurring meeting on the calendar. You don't need to meet if there's no agenda and you don't need to meet if you don't feel like meeting. You can always cancel it. But having it on the calendar just puts a forcing function to think about whether you need to talk to this person today or not, you know. Uh, so that helps a lot with those kind of connections where your work influences each other's work, you know, um, or they are on the boundary teams, sister teams, whatever you call them. If it is an external connection, for example, um, these could be people who work in the same area as you do. For example, I used to work on the experimentation platform at Yelp, um, and there used to be conferences dedicated to that topic. Or if you're working in the observability space, there are observability conferences and people who are known faces of that area who work in the open source projects, whose name pop up in your textbook often, you know, things like that. So. Um, Keeping a connection, maybe if it is just a LinkedIn connection, to see their posts coming through, to see what they're working on. And if they post that, oh, they have an event happening today, uh, it might be good to just send them a DM and say, hey, um, is this a paid event? Can you connect and, you know, like learn from them more? So you don't need to constantly keep in touch with, with those connections. They're there on LinkedIn. It's more of a passive consumption of information from them at that point. Um, so for those you don't need to be more active. You can just have that connection, remember who they are, just have them as your LinkedIn connect contact and that's that's good enough, you know, so. All right, good advice from everybody. Shockingly, you know, it's surprising no one, obviously. Um, okay, let's talk about how your professional network has supported your career. Um, Amy, you talked about getting referred um, from somebody uh, that had been that had gotten hired at a, at a previous company. So that's really awesome. Um, Oriana, what has this looked like for you? How has your professional network supported your career? So in a similar way, I have been referred to jobs in the past. Uh, also, Yelp, uh, uh, a friend from high school and the bachelor uh, referred me to, to Yelp. Um, I have also been referred or given opportunities to talk at a conference or participate in a conference or participate in this event. For instance, uh, a colleague at Yelp mentioned that, oh, this is coming up. 
you are you interested in participating so that's uh, one uh, another way and i've also found uh, mentors uh, on yeah on different jobs or different things that i have done that have helped me on different aspects uh, and at different levels of, of my career so uh, at the beginning on you know how to be a bit more organized how can i write a ticket how can i i write a proper uh, PR documentation, you know, this kind of things. From that to, okay, how would you become from a software engineer to a tech lead? Uh, what do you need to do? These kind of things. That's um, where I have getting help. <laughs> I like that. Um, Soria, how about you? What, what, has, um, what has your professional network done for your career? What do you think are some of the, the, the big things? Yeah, I think role transitions and just giving you the confidence that you're thinking on the right track has come through my network. So for example, after I, uh, at my first software engineering job, um, this is a big consultancy company back in India. Um, I realized that I am enjoying creating runbooks and creating coaching material and trading more, mentoring more people who joined after me more than the actual engineering work that I had gotten to do at that company. Uh, this is because the engineering work there was mostly monotonous, repetitive, and you're just working on a small module. So you're basically this tiny fish in this big pond. You don't even know what the entire tool looks like. You know, you're just working on one module. So that was not encouraging work, fun work. I rather enjoyed the mentoring and coaching side of it. Um, I just happened to go to an alumni networking event from my undergrad school. Um, and I was talking to a professor of mine there and just explaining like my day to day. She was curious about how work is and things like that. And I told her, this is what motivates me. Like I, I want to create more mentoring documents. I want to create more run books to help people do their work and coach them as they're onboarding. And they, she said, OK, that sounds like you're doing my job that I do on a day to day basis as an assistant professor at this university. Um, and she was the one who told me to maybe try, try to see if that's something that you want to do. It's, you're still very early in your career. She showed me that there's a path, there's an opportunity that you could try. You don't have to, just because you did an undergrad degree in computer science does not mean that you need to kind of continue as a software engineer. That's not your only path. Um, she sort of gave me that option. Uh, after we had that talk, I felt good. I, I felt like, okay, I can go back home and look at my options. Uh, the very next day, she actually sent me a couple of referrals and to open positions as assistant professor. So I took it up, took a chance, go head first, um, and did work as an assistant professor for four years. So that was something that just translated from that one conversation, you know. That's so awesome. And this is truly, this is why it's important to make friends and like, okay, we can call it networking if you want to, but it's important to make business friends with people who are going to think of you, who are going to ask you like, hey, have you ever thought about doing this? Or, hey, have you heard about this opportunity? Or I think you'd be really great for X, Y, and Z. Like this, is, these are the things that we have to do so that we are thought of when these, these opportunities arise. And honestly, like, especially if somebody is asking you, like, do you want to do something? Even if it's not something you actually want to do, that's still a person to keep talking to because that is someone who is saying, hey, this opportunity might be something that person would enjoy. So that's already a person who's already thinking about you. So that's someone to get closer to and and be more clear about like, hey, you know, as I'm figuring out what I want to do with my career, I'm realizing I don't want to have anything to do with circus performing. It's not for me. I don't like it. I don't like trains. And so then you're like, great, now I know this thing and I can go away from, you know, the train aspect of the business and go lean more heavily into lion taming because that's just what I love. You know, like I, this is, these are the ways we find these things, right? You don't know what's going to find you in your career and it might be something you're not at all looking for. Um, okay, before we keep moving, I do want to go back to a couple of questions that got asked in the chat here. Um, Yubu had said, requesting feedback can vary depending on the individual that you're speaking to. If you want to receive more constructive feedback rather than just reassuring comments, how should you structure your request? I like this because a lot of times when people, when you ask someone for feedback, the, what they're actually hearing is, tell me I'm doing a good job at this. So if you're, if you're, if you are a person who is not looking for that and you want the, 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 the critical feedback, how do you think that should be asked? Have you had somebody ask this of you or have you had to ask this of a, of a mentor or something? Um, you know, what has this looked like in your past if it's happened? 
Um, let's see. Uh, Amy, you want to go? I can go. Um, so Yelp, you know, we have these things called levels. Uh, a lot of tech companies have this. And so you're basically split out into, I think, 15 dimensions, which is like a mix of five sub dimensions. Um, and essentially the way that I frame it a lot is this is what I think my performance is. So I'll perform a self-evaluation when I talk to my manager, for example, uh, and I'll essentially tell them, I think I'm strong here to get to the next level. We need to improve this because um, it's basically a system that we know what we kind of have to strive for um, to reach the next level. And I'm very, like I said, I'm very self-critical. So even to my detriment, I've sometimes like harped that, oh, maybe I'm not good in, uh, I don't know, certain sub dimension. I'm not really going to specify them. Um, and then I invite my manager to give me feedback. That way I'm being critical and I'm seeing if my self-critical evaluation of myself is actually aligning with the perception of my manager and then my skip. Um, and that's how I've invited feedback without just trying to get a pat on the back. I kind of am self-critical of myself um, and just try and see if the other person mirrors that criticism. I like that. That's one way to approach it. Um, Surya, how about you? Do you take the same tack or do you approach it in a different way? Um, what Amy said absolutely works for me as well. So that's more from my direct manager or my skip level manager. But if I'm asking for a peer feedback, like you pointed out, it's very easy for people to say good things to you rather than constructive feedback because they are not invested in your career growth as much as you or your manager is, you know. Um, so it's very necessary to give them some structure that you were mentioning. Um, I personally think the start, stop, continue is a very simple, easy to draft structure. Um, so if you just ask for, send them an email saying, hey, I'm looking for some kind of feedback. Um, can you just tell me what to start, what to stop, what to continue doing? You know, So the continue doing is your, oh, you're doing great in this. And then they're forced to think about what this person should be starting to do more of or starting to do new. Um, if there's something that we should be do, what that we are doing that does not help or that is not, um, you know, going anywhere or that's not a positive thing, maybe ask them to stop it. So then people are forced to think about what to start, what to stop, what to continue. Uh, so giving a structure like that helps. Um, I've also found that maybe linking some um, literature around giving feedback uh, helps people understand that being nice and being um what do you say like just just being the yes man to something is not helping anybody so there's this concept about being radical having radical candor when giving feedback so if you can find link to that documentation and share that when asking for feedback that's like it, it, it gives them more confidence that yes this person actually is expecting more radical candor you know and honest feedback i like that um, something else that's worked for me, especially like having this job, it's a very odd job to try and, and do performance evaluations for, um, like, oh, is everybody having a good time? Yes. Excellent. Great. So for me, I tend to go back and I'll like look at a past chat and I'll, you know, I'll send a message to my supervisor and say, Hey, I felt like the opening was a little bit long here. Do I need to cut that down? So like, you know, the kind of like shtick that I say at the top of the, of the thing, but I'll point to something specific and say like, I think there, I think I need to tweak this. What do you think needs to change here? Um, and that, that I feel like is a little bit easier way to open up because that way, like you're showing specifically, like, I think there might be an issue here. So you're not just asking them to like, you know, critique willy nilly. That can seem a little bit, not necessarily overwhelming, but like sometimes if people are looking at the entire project, they want to, they want to like, start with well this one small thing but everything else is great so i've i've found that like pointing to an area that i also think might be the area that needs to be improved is much more likely to get feedback in the areas that i want but it's also you can always also say to somebody like hey that was so great thank you so much for feedback on that i was actually really worried about this opening section you didn't say much about it is do you think it's fine or not like you know super simple um so i very much appreciate that a little bit of direction there um, let's see. Da, 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 da. Okay. We did get a question in the chat. This person, um, Amara had asked, how can I self promote? How can I self promote confidently during job hunting after a career break? So this is a really good question. All right. I think there's a lot of us that, um, either had career, have had career breaks before or had, um, one for whatever reason over COVID. 
Um, and coming back and trying to self-promote even without a career break can already feel like weird or uncomfortable for, for people. Um, so let's talk about this. If you're coming off of a career break, what are some of the ways you could self-promote within the job hunting phase? Um, let's see. Amy, do you want to lead? Well, personally, I haven't really taken a career break. I'm still somewhat early into my career, so I haven't had, um, well, the misfortune of having like lost a job, for example. Yeah. Uh, but I think what I would say is that it depends on the job you're looking for. Um, but when you're trying to self-promote, you're really trying to uh, meet the criteria of the job you're looking to to really assume. And so what I would say is just trying and showcase what you've done in your previous jobs. Um, try and really highlight that you still have the business sense and all the context to succeed in that job. But once again, I haven't had a career break, so maybe my perspective here is not that educated. No, I think that's a good way to call it out. I mean, that's definitely something we hear from people is to um, not necessarily, depending on what the break is, right? Because sometimes you have time to keep like keep your skills sharp on things. And other times you have a break because you cannot do the thing you need to do and work at the same time. Um, so truly, like, I think it's really important to highlight, like you said, those skills, what you've retained, what you still know. But if you were, well, not if, everybody learns things every day, whether they want to or not. So even if you weren't actively working on things for your career, you were still learning and growing. So identifying what you've been doing that's either been keeping your skills sharp or keeps you ready or new skills that you've developed because you had the freedom to blah, blah, blah. Um, Surya, how do you feel about this? Have you had to promote yourself after a career break? And if so, how did you do that? Yeah. Um, so like I said, I do have experience as an assistant professor. Um, I realized that I don't want to be just passively coaching people anymore. And that's why I kind of joined the industry again. But I had a year's break between that job and um, the one that I have right now. Um, what you need to do is for me, so I, I, I didn't have enough software engineering experience to be starting to apply to software engineering roles here in the U.S., um, I did go and get myself a degree. Um, so when I came to the US, I did join grad school and I got a master's degree. Um, so that is to showcase that, okay, here's my interest and I'm serious about it. So although I don't have software engineering experience, I'm willing to learn and do more. But let's say master's degree is not on the cards for you. You don't have the time. You don't want to invest that much. That's fine. What you can do is do smaller courses if you want, if you're interested. So there are so many e-courses available today. So just doing that, having a certificate to say that's the most recent learning experience that you've had, have it on your LinkedIn profile in your resume. That goes a long way to show that, okay, you're back uh, investing time in learning, in continuous improvement and so on. Um, if you don't want to do that, other things that you can do, if you are more of a hands-on person, contribute to an open source project, um, you know, leverage the open source community to showcase your interest and like the work that you can do. Fine, if you don't want to join an open source project, have a small um, system that you create or work that you do, publish it on GitHub, like keep it open so people can see, have a link to that GitHub repo on your LinkedIn profile, that helps. Um, the other thing you can do is obviously network, which is go to conferences, you know, um, meet people, explain what your career break is um, and things like that. The other thing you can do is um, join. So let's say you went on leave because you want you are a parent and you wanted to spend some time with your family. There are groups which kind of help people who have gone on parental leave to come back into the workforce. Um, so joining groups that you identify with goes a long way because they have strong, concrete uh, resources to help you that you might not find by just googling or linkedin search you know um, so yeah, these are the few things that i have found really useful i love this i think these are awesome 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 tips oriana can I, yeah, yeah can please. i add one thing yes yes also do your research of what the industry is looking at the moment like what and what uh your previous experiences and your current skills will help you uh, to get to, to those positions easier. Uh, or you can see, okay, maybe I am lacking something. So as uh, Surjan and Amy said, maybe you, you need to do an, another lecture, you need to go back to study something, 
or not really, you can just uh, work on yourself uh, by uh, yeah, working on, on an open source project or, or on a personal project that you can highlight. And I have done that in the past and I have um, put the link on my CV on that and people in the interviews have asked me um, about those projects. So I think it is important to, to highlight those too. I love it. Absolutely. Excellent. Excellent advice here. Um, okay. We are almost at the end of time today. So I just want to take a quick second here um, to uh, re-highlight real quick uh, Yelp's company page on powertofly.com. It looks like what you see uh, behind me here. Um, if you go on that page, I know Rob is sharing links in the chat thread for this as well. The big thing that I want to highlight is two things. Obviously, the jobs tab is massive. I think it's it's better, it's beneficial to, to uh, apply via Power to Fly because if nothing else, you will have at least one more eye on your application. There's somebody that that watches to see how how Power to Fly ap applicants are moving through the process. So I really encourage it that way. Just make sure that if you are, um, you know, complete all steps that you're directed to complete, so that way you know you've fully submitted your application. The other thing I like to highlight for people here is if you are looking about going into an interview, potentially, um, definitely check out this page, um, either the overview, the about tab and company insights. You will see um, if there's any resources that that company has listed. A lot of times companies, especially I know Yelp does because y'all have been partners with us for a while. Um, but there's like meet the recruiter, ask me anything videos. There's all kinds of really great resources there. And it will be really excellent information. And it could give you something to talk about or to ask about at your job, uh, at your next interview with Yelp that is probably different than maybe the latest Business Insider article that like 87 people have referenced because it's been going around for three days. So just as a thought, it can be a really great place to get a little bit more research um, and find out something more about these companies. Um, like I said, don't forget to uh, to smash that follow button. It's like almost directly above my head. Um, that is going to make sure that Power to Fly uh, keeps you uh, at the top of, of Yelp's radar and it's gonna make sure that Yelp stays at the top of your radar as well. All right, y'all. Now we are absolutely to the end. We are a minute over. Apologies, y'all. I try and end these things on time, but I just want to say a huge thank you to Surya, to Oriana, to Amy, and then to all of the fabulous Power to Fly people, Rhea, Rob, among them, uh, Christina from, uh, from your account. Uh, exec team, all kinds of people work really hard to make these events look so good. So thank you so, so, so much. Thank you to the Yelpers as well. Obviously the prep that y'all did for this was massive. We really appreciate that. Um, my final thank you is as always to our audience members. I am grateful that you come to these events, um, not only because it means I have a job, but I am grateful that you come to these events because it means you just took 60 minutes out of your day to do something positive for yourself and your career. That is not easy. It is not simple in this day and age. And so whether you are a little treat person or not, listen to Meg, okay? Give yourself the little treat, the pat on the back, gold star, cookie, Starbucks, drink, whatever is your thing. Um, but truly, I'll thank you so much for coming today and thank you for doing this for yourself. Um, now, if this has been your first Power to Fly event, I sincerely hope it will not be your last. And whether this was your 50th or your 500th, I really, really can't wait to see y'all come back here again soon. Go out and have the day y'all deserve to have. And hopefully we'll see you back here. Bye. <laughs>